Now that is a sight that can never be unseen. <laughs> Greetings, cyber dogs and citizens of the interwebs. This is Ren Diggity Dog coming at you in another episode of Minecraft Survival from the Hermitcraft server. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from all over the freaking world, welcome to Ren Dog's Bacon Hole. Hmm. That came out a little bit dodgier than expected, my teats, but uh, hey-ho, we've crossed the bridge. <laughs> Let's plod on, shall we? Welcome back, guys, to the Hermacraft server. I hope everybody out there is having a magnificent day today. It is Sunday for me here in England, and it is absolutely terrible outside. There is a hurricane going on outside of my window right now. And you know what? There's no better thing to do in a hurricane than play some Minecraft. You guys know what I'm saying? You pick it up when I put it down. Here we are at the mining district of the Hermacraft server. Well, we're on the outskirts of the mining district. And a couple of weeks ago on live stream, we set up a bacon hole, or should I say a beacon mining facility. A couple of episodes ago, we started making some beacons and I went a little bit beacon crazy. I've got myself about four or five beacons now and one of those beacons is going to come all the way down at the bottom of this giant pit. I have set up uh, the foundations of a beacon and what this is going to become is a place for us to mine a ridiculous amount of resources. So let's kick things off today, setting up a beacon mine down here. This is gonna be a beacon strip mine. And for those of you guys who have never seen such a thing in action, prepare your minds to be amazed. This is the only way to play Minecraft in the late game. Once you get yourself a beacon, once you get yourself a bunch of blocks, uh, iron blocks, gold blocks, emerald blocks, or diamond blocks, depending on how rich you are, you can set yourself up one of these bad boys. And basically what we're trying to do here is get haste to right so with haste 2 and an efficiency 5 pickaxe like pixcalibur over here you can basically do this boom baby <laughs> how awesome is this man such an amazing way uh, to mine resources really really quickly we're down here at level 11 we're down here at diamond level 2 so this is a really fantastic way to get diamonds uh, very very quickly and on top of that of course this is a great way to get all the other resources that you need in minecraft including cobble stone uh, lapis redstone anything Anything else that you need you can crank out of a beacon mine and of course uh, the beacon mine is going to allow to allow us to do this about 50 blocks in each direction uh, somewhere around there 50 to 55 blocks something like that so we can actually get ourselves an absurd amount of resources to do this which is amazing so we're going to be getting a ton of resources down here uh, which is going to really set us up for the rest of the season now the reason i've set up this bacon mine all the way out here in the middle of nowhere is it creates a little bit of a mess underground right we're going to be digging away a massive area of dirt down here or of blocks down here anyway and we don't want to leave a mess for the other hermits so i've come all the way out here to the mining district to do this hi scale and I see you there, my dude, with your beautiful golden armor. Get wrecked. <laughs> um, and hopefully, we'll be able to crank out some diamonds out of this bad boy. We're going to be busting into a couple of cave networks and stuff too, which is super exciting. Uh, on top of that, a bacon mine is really good for repairing your mending tools, right? So if we stick Silkworm Jim in our offhand and uh, mine some of this, this coal over here, we're going to be repairing our elytra, our, uh, our dogatello dome, and of course, any other items that might have mending on it. We can just do this. Um, and as we're digging through this we can repair our items what's also cool about this of course is that pixcalibur's got mending on it so as we are mining we will be able to repair our the, the pickaxe that we're using to mine and that means that you can pretty much mine infinitely uh, in a mine like this without having to repair your tools it's very helpful uh, of course when you bust into water like this it's gets a little bit annoying uh, because it kind of messes up your plans but hey let's just plug up this little water source over here and we should be good um now we're not going to spend the whole of today in this bacon mine we'll spend a little bit of time down here while we have a quick chat but uh, i'll probably be doing most of the mining off camera hello creeper my dude uh, there you go goodbye <laughs> smell you later you had a, a good attempt. You didn't even sizzle, man. I got you before you even sizzled. Oh my goodness. Is there a skeleton spawner over here or something? Or is this a whole bunch of darkness? Maybe we should start things off by doing a little bit of lighting around here, right? Just to make sure we don't get interrupted. But yeah, guys, uh, there's a couple of really sweet things that I want to do in today's episode. Uh, this weekend, so yesterday, was a really amazing event on Twitch. We had an all-day-long Hermitcraft live stream. I think... 
like 10 hermits streamed live from the server back to back and the hermits did an amazing job over at the shopping district uh, basically beautifying the shopping district a bit making it a little bit more safe also adding a bunch of lighting to the shopping district and also adding uh, a bunch of decoration and stuff so I'm very excited to go and see what the hermits have done out there um, I actually haven't looked at it since the live stream yesterday I've been uh, sort of out here waiting to start recording this episode so today we're going to go have a look at that we're also going to work a little bit more on the Hermitcraft Stock Exchange, of course, a project that we started with Dark M77 uh, in the previous episode. Thank you guys, by the way, for all of the love that you guys have given me and Doc for this project, man. You guys are super excited about the project. You guys got Doc and I super pumped for this, and uh, it's going to be magnificent when we get that stock exchange up and running. Uh, a lot of you guys pointed out a few flaws in our system that Doc and I are going to work on, but we should be able to get that stock exchange trading uh, in the next week or so, which is going to be super exciting. Uh, on a live stream a couple of days ago, I did quite a bit of work on the stock exchange, which I'm going to show you guys in this episode. So we'll crank a little bit of that, and uh, we might do a little bit of work on Grand Central Station too. Um, but before we get to any of that jazz, my dudes, I am super excited to show you some really cool stuff that I've been working on off camera for the last few days. We're going to start working on the Hermit Railway Network properly uh, over the next coming month or so, guys. I want to try and get all of the stations for the HRN set up within the next two months or so. We're going to get a bit of help from some of the hermits too, who are going to come and help us build this project. And uh, off camera, uh, a few days ago, I set up the foundations for a bunch of HRN stations all over the server. I, basically, I spent a bit of time looking at the map of the server and flying around the server with me, Elytra, trying to discover the perfect spots for each of the stations that are going to form our massive railway network here in Season 6. And uh, I'm very excited to take you guys through my ideas for where the lines should be running for the, uh, the Hermit Railway Network and where all of the stations are going to be situated too. So, we have got a lot of things to get through in today's episode guys i hope you are sitting comfortable i hope you got a tasty freaking snack something crunchy and tasty to sip on uh we got a lot of things to do jeez hello creeper you got your revenge for your friend my dude i'll take that one i slayed your friend in cold blood yeah, you came for me, man. Where did he actually come from? Probably up here, right? I should probably go light this up. Uh, but anyway, guys, lots of stuff to do in today's episode. Get yourself comfy, man. Um, and we're going to have a bunch of fun today on Sunday. And hopefully this uh, hurricane outside isn't going to blow my house away. Because it's, it's going absolutely crazy out there, my dudes. Oh, isn't that cute? But it's wrong! There is something very disturbing about this picture, Cyber Diggity Dogs. It looks like one of the hermits might have had a little bit too much fun on their stream day and has come over here to the Big Logs Incorporated shop and messed with our signage. <laughs> That's supposed to say logs, not loser. Oh, well played, well played hermit, you got me good there man. Who is responsible for this my dudes? Revenge is in order. Nobody messes with the Renbowski. I mean, didn't they learn their lesson from Grian? <laughs> um, okay, well, I'm going to look very much forward to seeing the comment section of this episode, guys. Who is responsible for this? Who are we going to be pranking back in revenge? Because I must say, very good, but also very wrong. Somebody's going down, and it's going to be sweet. <laughs> oh, man, speaking of sweet... Isn't that amazing over there? That is Good Times with Scar's new terraforming shop, and it is looking absolutely glorious, isn't it? Hi, Captain Etho. What's happening, my brother, man? It's a giant tree with a cloud pouring, well, snow onto it. And I got to say, guys, that is just an incredible build, isn't it? For survival, Minecraft. I mean, this is the kind of thing that you see in Minecraft creative mode, right? Wow, Scar, you are an artist, sir. That is absolutely beautiful. Looks like a lot of amazing stuff has actually happened out here in the shopping district uh, this weekend, guys. The hermits worked really hard on making the district look a little bit better. Take a look at this. We've got a beautiful little dock area here now, just under, lo under Big Logs Incorporated. I appreciate this, man. Get some more customers in here from the ocean, from Aquatown, right? Very nice. I like this, man. I think we've got a bunch of lighting and stuff going too, so the place is a little bit safer at night. Let's quickly check on profits. I wonder if any of the hermits uh, did a little bit of uh, retail therapy during their live stream. Shall we see if we made any sales? <laughs> Hello, my little friends. Bling blangs coming out the butt, guys. Beautiful. We sold a bunch of, oh my goodness, a bunch of logs here. <laughs> also, somebody put the G 
of logs inside of the dark oak wood chest. Also, our very first dark oak log sails. Very happy with that, man. How about some jungle? Nope. Acacia? Beautiful. My goodness, guys. Look at this. We are making the profits. No birch sold. And a bunch of beautiful... Ha hang on. Oh, this is the big logs voucher that I gave to Mumbo. Very good. Very nice. We actually picked up 44 diamonds over the weekend, guys. That brings our weekly profits to about a stack and a half of diamonds. Very good, actually. I'm very pleased with that, man. Maybe we'll spend some of these diamonds today. Uh, where's the rest of our log side, by the way? <laughs> We're going to need to fix this up at some point, man. That is some bad advertising. I mean, who's going to come and shop at the, sh at the loser shop? I mean, no one wants to buy logs from a loser. <laughs> sad face. Cue the sad violin music, guys. <laughs> oh, man. GG, Hermit. Whoever you are. Nice work. I like this prank. Psychological. And I love the misspelling, too. Very, very good. You know, because it used to say logs with a Z. I mean, it's just a great prank. Uh, shall we carry on looking around here, guys? I'm very keen to see what the hermits have done here in the shopping district. It looks like some uh, sort of subtle terraforming has been done around here. Uh, very, very good. I wonder if any new shops have popped up since we were last together, too. It looks like we've had a couple new trees added here and stuff. A, a few new paths have been made here, too. It's feeling a lot more um, like an actual district on on a Minecraft server rather than just a bunch of shops sort of plonked down next to each other. I like this, man. I like this. Good job, guys. Very, very proud of my fellow hermits, man. They did a great job this weekend. Hope you guys who were there for the live stream enjoyed it. Uh, I got to catch a couple of the hermits, but uh, I was super busy myself. But man, the feedback that I got uh, that I saw on discord from the hermits was that it was an absolute success so thank you to everybody out there who came out this weekend to support our hermits man very very awesome uh fishy foods this i i don't like this but this is a direct competition to our stacks for stacks chicken shop this is the only competition we've had so far selling food on the server we sell stacks of chicken for one diamond this looks like it's selling fish it looks kind of sweet. How do we make this thing work? Uh, welcome to Fishy Foods, a division of Concorp. <laughs> and I mean that with love, Concorp. <laughs> oh, man. Home of the finest fried fish on all of Hermacraft. Right-click on the note block below to open the door to Fishy Foods. Okay, we'll right-click on this. Ooh, that's very good. Oh, and the fish stay up there? That is actually kind of impressive. This has got Cub Fan written all over it, doesn't it? Okay, well, a rather cramped shop. I'm not going to lie, man. I'm feeling a little bit claustrophobic. And <laughs> damn, it smells rotten in here, guys. This food is, this food is, ab I mean, you can't just put fish in chests and expect it to not start stanking. This place is nasty. I wouldn't buy fish from this place if it was the last food on earth. Man, you get food poisoning from this. One diamond for four stacks, though. Wow. Wow. Okay, that is, that is very competitive on the food market side of things. This is cooked salmon. One diamond for two stacks of cooked salmon. All right, that's pretty tasty. Uh, I've got a lot of cooked chicken right now. You know what, though? I'm going to do a little bit of industrial sabotage right now, guys. We're going to buy all of this salmon, okay? So that's five uh, salmons, one for two stacks. So that's one, two, and you know what? We'll give the stupid con butts an extra diamond. And these fish are going to be disposed of, I think. You know, this is a health and safety violation. Also, when it, it, whenever any other hermit comes to shop here, uh, you know, they're going to see that this is all sold out and stuff. And maybe they won't actually buy the cooked cod because cooked cod is a pretty bad food, food source. Cooked salmon, on the other hand, is pretty good. So let's buy all the cooked salmon and we're going to dispose of this nonsense. It's absolutely disgusting. It's stinky. It's, it's an, an abomination. It's hurting my nose right now. In fact, my eyes are freaking watering right now, man. This is unacceptable. Selling rotten fish on the Hermitcraft server. What are the Concorp thinking? Seriously. There we go. There's a beautiful little cacti over here. And uh, let's just get rid of this salmon over here. Goodbye. Yep. I'm, I'm doing the Hermitcraft server a service here, okay, guys? We don't want anybody to get food poisoned. There we go. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Job well done, Red. Sorry about that cut, guys. Just had to blow my nose, man. I was feeling a little bit queasy after having all that rotten fish in me inventory. <laughs> anyway, here we are just outside iTrade. This place has changed a lot, hasn't it? Mm, this is looking real good. Also, our uh, nether portal for the shopping district has got a bit of a makeover here, it looks like it. That's looking real tasty. Grian has spaghetti arms. <laughs> what? That is Grian's head, though, isn't it? 
That's very interesting. Well, it's not quite Grian's head. It kind of looks like Grian's head. A very strange version of Grian's head. But the sun's going down now, which is excellent. So this is going to give us a good opportunity to see if this place has been lit up. If it's a little bit safer for us to wander around here. But this area has definitely been improved. I like it, man. Good job, Hermits. Uh, we got uh, Azumavoid's Kelp uh, Block shop over here also looking pretty decent love those little baby drowns up there man that's very cute um and wow what is that i hope i haven't spoiled anything there that looks absolutely amazing i'm going to try keep that out of our vision though um oh and uh, a little bit of a spoiler <laughs> while we're here this is the hrn work site for the shopping district station oh you know it my dudes we couldn't with gas today <laughs> fishy rotten gas that is we're going to be talking about this in a second let's just do a little bit more exploring around here now that is a sight that can never be unseen what in the name of all that is jazzy has happened to the hermitcraft stock exchange guys <laughs> that is one of the most hilarious things that i've ever seen in my entire life here on the hermitcraft server Let's analyze what's going on here. It looks like we have been bumbonied by Iskel. We've got a Hermitcraft stock exchange bumboni mustache with some stupid freaking eyeballs. But on top of that, there's a bikini on the Hermitcraft stock exchange. My goodness, what happened on this weekend's Hermitcraft livestream, my dudes? It looks like this entire server has been eating Doc M77's mushrooms. <laughs> Things have gone absolutely insane. What the freak is this? Okay, well, I gotta say, that is glorious. Whoever is responsible for that bikini is an absolute genius of a hermit. <laughs> Can you guys let me know in the comments who put a bikini on the stock exchange? I, I will never be able to unsee this, guys. Th this is gonna be burnt into my eyeballs for the rest of eternity. <laughs> Those eyeballs, though, that derp face, that bikini. Although I gotta say, man, th this Hermitcraft stock exchange looking fun. You know what I'm saying? Whew, just needed a moment to gather my thoughts over there, guys. This kind of took my breath away. <laughs> Absolutely amazing prank. I love it, man. Uh, just let the night away, too. And while we're here in this part of the Hermitcraft server, I think I want to take a quick moment to show you guys the work that I have done off camera since we were last together. Last episode, Doc and I finished the facade of the Hermitcraft Stock Exchange, and Doc finished off some of the redstone over here. By the way, lots of you guys failed with your homework. A lot of you guys didn't actually go and check out Doc M77's redstone video for this project. I am disappointed, my dudes. Listen, I built the facade. Yes, I know it looks really awesome. Awesome, but the really good stuff is in the redstone. I mean, this is a there is some really amazing brain work going on here that Doc did in his episode. So please, guys, if you didn't go check out Doc's episode, please go and check it out at the end of this episode. I'm gonna stick a link to the episode here in this video, uh, and you guys got to go check it out. This entire project is Doc M77's brainchild. It came out of his beautiful German brain. I just built this thing. Okay, the real joy is in the redstone, and uh, trust me, you guys won't be disappointed, man. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Now, since we were last together, I have rebuilt the side of the mountain over here that Doc and I excavated. And I've also started on working on the foundations here for what is going to become the vault of the Hermitcraft Stock Exchange. So if we just come down here to the very bottom of this giant pit, uh, on live stream on Friday, I excavated a giant area over here. And this is where the hermits are going to have their vaults, or should we say their Hermitcraft Stock Exchange, Exchange banking vaults. Down here, this is where the hermits will be uh, storing the stocks that they purchase and they will be able to also use this as a bank for their diamonds and for their wealth. Each of the different companies that is going to be listed on the Hermitcraft Stock Exchange will have their very own personal vault down here. And uh, trust me when I say, man, Doc and I are going to make this vault pimp tastic baby we are going to be using the most expensive blocks for this it is going to be a very exclusive area uh, doc is going to be working on all of the redstone every single vault will have its own personal key so for example concorp will only be able to access the concorp vault uh, and all of the other companies will have their own personal vaults too Doc is going to install a beautiful redstone door over here too, like a, a proper bank vault door, which is going to be beautiful. And man, when the Hermits come in here, they are coming into the most exclusive build on the Hermitcraft server, man. It is going to be beautiful.
<laughs> come out the door into a bikini. Nice. Uh, I want to quickly show you what it looks like on the outside here too, because uh, it took us an entire live stream basically um, to finish this off. Take a look at this, man. We basically terraformed this entire side here. Uh, and as you can see, it looks pretty awesome. I don't want to spoil any of Grian's build over here. So let's see if we can do this without any spoilers. Uh, there we go. So it's looking nice and natural. Uh, there was a giant hole in this side of that mountain. That's now been sorted. So that looks really awesome. I think I might be spoiling a bunch of things here. So you know what? Let's get ourselves out of here. Oh, very uh, conveniently just flew over another HRN worksite, the Futuristic District Station. Uh, you know what, guys? That's actually a perfect caveat for us to go into the next part of today's episode, which is going to be talking about the layout that I have made, uh, or the foundation layout anyway, for the Hermitcraft Railway Network. But uh, yeah, that's all the work that we have done here um, on the Hermitcraft Stock Exchange since we were last together. Lots of progress has been done, which is really awesome. And speak of, speaking about Conbuts, hey, Cub, <laughs> what's happening, my dude? He's going to go check his profits, and he's going to feel all good about the fact that he sold all them fish but little does he know that all of his rotten fish have been destroyed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, it certainly looks like the Hermits had a great time on the live stream day this weekend, guys. Shenanigans coming out the wazoo, baby. Absolutely amazing. It's time for us, though, to get down to some serious proper work over here, guys, starting with the Hermit Railway Network Project. Some of you guys out there might be brand new to the Ren Diggity Dog channel. Hello, there's a beautiful, handsome specimen of a man is the Ren Diggity Dog, ladies. Get in line. <laughs> if you are new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Sit back and relax, man. Uh, we have got a couple of massive projects currently open here on the Hermitcraft server, the biggest of which is probably the Hermit Railway Network project. The basic idea for this project is to create a massive railway network across the entirety of Hermit Island that is gonna look a little something like this. A boop. And uh, as you guys can see, this is gonna be a huge project that I'm gonna need a bunch of help with from the other Hermits. And uh, over the last few days or so, I've spent quite a lot of time in the planning uh, process of this. It was all uh, very boring and stuff, so I didn't really uh, make any, you know, didn't include you guys in that particular process. Basically, I spent a couple of hours off camera looking at the map of Hermit Island and then also flying around trying to find decent positions uh, for all of the different stations that are going to make up the Hermit Railway Network. Now, we have started on the grandest of all the stations, uh, Grand Central Station over here. This is one of the projects that is currently uh, open in our uh, to-do book. And uh, today I would like to show you the locations of all of the other stations that we are going to be setting up here on the Hermitcraft server. Now, this is going to be a massive project. I'm not going to be able to do this by myself. So a lot of the Hermits on the server have a, have a are very excited and have agreed to help me out with this. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to commission the building and design of all of the other stations on the server to the Hermits. We might do a couple of stations ourselves, but most of the other stations here on the server are going to be completed by uh, other Hermits. So it's going to be a, a sort of nice big collaborative pro uh, project here on the server. It's going to be really sweet, man. I'm super excited about it. But before we could get to that, I needed to do a bunch of engineering planage, <laughs> so to speak. I needed to figure out exactly where all of the different stations were going to go on the server, how they were going to be connected. And I think I have come up with a really good plan for the Hermit Railway project. So guys, uh, for the next few minutes or so we're going to take a look at that hello drown say hello to tridog 77 uh, get wrecked my dude are you come with friends or so maybe we should sleep the night away over here guys now in my mind one of the keys to making such a massive railway network like this a success in minecraft survival is good solid planning uh, this network is going to consist of a bunch of different stations with a bunch of different lines crisscrossing each other all over the show and to ensure that everything goes smoothly and that we don't have to remake anything or redo do anything during the course of this project it's very important that we get the logistics correct right so take a look at this guys i have basically finalized the plan and the layout for the hermit railway network of course these plans are not completely final and uh, some of the positions of the stations might change depending on uh, perhaps um, the plans of the other hermits uh, for example we might have put a station somewhere that a hermit was planning to build something at and then of course we could do some adjustments but let's go through the basic outline for what the Hermitcraft Railway Network is going to look like. 
The network is going to consist of one major central station known as Grand Central Station. Uh, and then there are going to be four other uh, major stations. We're going to have a station in the north, a station in the south, a station in the east, and a station in the west. Those are going to be primary stations that are going to be connecting anything on the outside of Hermit Island to Hermit Island. So any builds that consist or any builds that are done outside of the island, for example, Grian's base or Mumbo's base or Iskel's base or Stress's base, they will connect to the main north, south, east, or west stations. There are then going to be subsidiary stations within each of the districts uh, of the, the Hermit Island. Uh, so we're going to have a station for the modern district, for the shopping district, for the industrial district, for the futuristic district, for the fantasy district, and for the medieval district. Now, here comes the interesting bit, right? We've got all of these stations, and now we've got to find a very smart way to connect all of these stations up together to each other. And uh, the way that we're going to be doing this is with five major railway lines. So, the first four major railway lines are going to be the direct lines from Grand Central Station all the way out to the north, to the south, and to the east, and to the west. Each of these major lines are going to be color-coded, as I'm showing you here in this example. Um, and then we're going to have one other major line that is going to be known as the Great Circular Line. This Great Circular Line is going to be connecting all of the district stations together in a giant circle. So whatever district you're in, you're going to be able to use the, grand, the Great Central Line to get to any other district, or you'll be able to use the Great Central Line to go to another district station and then make a change there to take you either to Grand Central Station or to one of the major stations in the north, the south, and the east, and the west, depending on which district station you uh, you got off on. Now, in my mind, guys, this is going to be the best way to set up the Hermit Railway Network. I want to make sure that a Hermit can get to anywhere from anywhere on Hermit Island. That's the idea uh, with the layout of this particular network, right? It might mean that the Hermit will have to do a couple of changes here and there uh, at different stations, but that's totally awesome. We, we'll be able to make those changes super easy for the Hermits using a little bit of Redstone Madness. Uh, I think we're going to probably get Doc in to help us out with the Redstone on that, but maybe what we can do now is, is show you guys a little bit of an example of how a Hermit might travel using uh, the Hermit Railway Network. And this is a great opportunity for me to show you guys also where I have laid out some of the potential stations uh, for the Hermit Railway Network. So let's do a bit of an example run over here. Okay, we're going to start all the way here in the shopping district. This is a 24 by 24 area that's been reserved for the shopping district station. As this is, as this is a subsidiary station, it's going to be slightly smaller than the main stations. The north, south, east and west main stations will be 32 by 32 and the district stations will be 24 by 24. Just to, just to sort of uh, make the main stations a little bit more impressive than the smaller stations. But anyway, let's say, for example, a hermit wants to go from the shopping district uh, to the fantasy district, right, where Falsy and I live. Now, the fantasy district, of course, is in the north. So that hermit is going to have to travel north to get to the fantasy district. So that hermit would come here to the shopping district station and uh, they would take the line back to Grand Central Station. So that line will probably be a subway line running under here. And that line is going to stop at this terminal over here in Grand Central Station, right? That hermit will then have to um, embark from the train and head over to the northern terminal, which is going to be this terminal over here. This is going to be the terminal sending any uh, of the hermits to the north. And this terminal will have a main line, of course, I'll show you guys again on the map, that is going to go through a number of district stations on its way to the main north station. So the first district station that the northern line will... Um, travel to is going to be the Pirate District Station, which is uh, sort of marked over here. So you guys can see I've added another 24 by 24 area over here for the Pirate District Station. Now when the Hermit arrives here on their minecart, if they stay in the minecart, they will continue to travel on the Northern Line. And that Northern Line, of course, the next stop on that Northern Line is going to be the Fantasy District Station. Uh, and the last stop on the Northern Line, of course, will be the Northern uh, District Station, or the Northern Station, excuse me, the Northern Main Station. So we've arrived here, but we, we haven't arrived at our destination. We're going to stay in our minecart. Next stop on the northern line is going to be the Fantasy District Station, which I've allocated a little spot for it over here. Uh, each of these stations that I have 
added over here is supposed to give access to the hermits that live in that area as well as provide like a really beautiful place to build a station let's just quickly talk about this right so here in the pirate state the pirate station foundation we have a beautiful view of cleo's base here this also gives cleo really good access to her base here right so it's easy for her to travel to her base and we also get a great view of the station over aquatown over false symmetry's beautiful build here and over what might happen here in the fantasy district right the same is going to apply here to the fantasy district station uh, i've chosen quite an open spot here for the fantasy district station Got a great view of Falsy's build, of course. Uh, very close to Tango's base over here, too. And uh, great access to all of the different things over here, to the tag game over there, which we can connect to the station via a road system or something. Uh, but yeah, next stop on the northern line is going to be the Fantasy District station over here. Another 24 by 24. And if the Hermit wants to continue to the north main station, they'll stay on the line and they will travel through all of these mountains. We can make a really beautiful mine, like mine cart track through here, right? Like a really beautiful railway line. Maybe we go through here and come around here and the north station is going to be on the currently unassigned district uh, section of Hermacraft Island we haven't as a group decided what this district is going to be but I have laid out a 32 by 32 over here um, this might change because um, we don't really know what we're doing with this but of course this this northern station is going to give access to all of the different things going out here in the north we've got like a creeper farm over here and a couple of other hermit projects out here so that is the journey that a hermit would take from the shopping district all the way to the northern station and they would travel to the northern station via the pirate district and the fantasy district and if they wanted to go to any of those they would use the northern line all right so let's do another example over here guys we are a hermit currently at the pirate district station who wants to travel all the way to the southern station right so we're going to get on the line and we're going to take the northern line back to grand central station over here so the northern line will of course end up at the northern terminal we'll it will disembark there and head over to the southern terminal and the southern terminal is going to take us all the way in this direction via two district stations of course and the first district station on the way there is going to be the medieval district station over here and you can see I've set up another 24 by 24 over here for the medieval station this gives the hermit great access to Wells Knights area over there to the stacks for stacks tavern and the medieval district uh, area over here and of course uh, gives us pretty good access to everything that might get built around the medieval district um, over here I think the southern line is actually a little bit different to the other lines i think the the southern line only has one district station on its way south uh, so the southern line will only stop at the medieval district simply because of the layout of uh, of hermacraft island and the layout of the stations but anyway the line will go to the medieval district the the southern line and then that southern line is going to come all the way to the south now this is a little bit interesting uh, and perhaps a little bit controversial but i have situated the southern station on a very southerly uh, part of this whole area and it's somewhere out here hold on let me see if i can find it um, I know it's somewhere there it is there we go so this is going to be the southern station now the reason that I have put the southern station off of Hermitcraft Island is because out here of course we have got a couple of hermits that live out here Iskal 85 lives out here and Stress Monster lives out here and as the season progresses hermits are probably going to be moving to the south there's a whole bunch of really beautiful biomes in this this area so I've got a nice big 32 by 32 over here for the south station and uh, all of the hermits out here will be able to connect up to South Station so uh, if we wanted to come to South Station from Grand Central we would travel to the medieval district station and then all the way out here to the South the South Station and the South Station is going to give access to the south uh, of our Hermacraft world here so that's pretty cool right that's pretty cool now let's carry on with the example say we want to go from the South Station to the East Station we would of course take the, the South Line or the Southern Line all the way back to the medieval district hmm, I'm probably not going to have enough rockets for this my dudes but let's plod on okay so now we want to go to the east station from the south station of course we would take the southern line all the way back to the medieval uh, district station we take that line all the way back to central station or we could take the great central line back to the shopping district but for the, the case of this uh, example we'll come all the way back to grand central and then of course we will disembark 
from the East Station, which is going to take us via the Shopping District Station over here. And then we will follow that East Station line all the way up into the mountains and all the way over to the Futuristic District Station, which is going to be over here. And we also now have another station, which is a little bit off of Hermacraft Island. And uh, this is going to be the East Station out here in the middle of the ocean. We're going to have another Aqua Station out here. And the reason that I chose this location uh, for this East Station is because we got a couple of hermits out here. We got Green and Mumbo out here, of course, and we want to ensure that they are connected to the HRN. So both of them can then connect up to the East Station, which is going to be situated out here. Um, so now we've done the easterly line. We've only got one more line to do, right? Which is going to be the west line. Uh, so to go west, we're going to travel from the east station all the way back to the futuristic district station, which is then going to take us all the way back to the shopping district station. Are you guys following this, by the way? I know it's a little bit complicated, but uh, I think it's very important that we go through this so that, that we're all on the same page uh, together for this project. So now we want to go west, right? So now we've come back to the east, the easterly um, terminal. We'd cross Grand Central into the west terminal, and we would take the line all the way out to uh, the west side of the map, right? Now this is going to take us, there's another hermit flying over here. This is going to take us via uh, another station out here. I've, uh, I've demarked an area over here in the industrial station for the industrial district uh, station which is going to be over here and then from here we will continue west to the west station which is all the way out here in a very interesting location check it out it's all the way over here right pretty sweet <laughs> i like it uh, so this is where the the grand west station will be um, and this is going to be connected to grand central via the industrial station uh, or the industrial district station now i might have messed up a few of the connections according to my plan i'm kind of doing this off the top of my head guys but hopefully uh, this has given you a great idea of what uh, the great hermit railway network project is going to look like in the end and, and next step for us of course is to finish off grand central station and then start laying down the tracks to all of the different main north south east west stations and the district stations themselves and then of course to to create the great central line um railway line uh, so yeah lots of crazy crazy stuff to left to do in this project guys i hope you're excited about it and uh, now i can start commissioning some of the hermits out there to start working on these stations and we can really get cracking with this particular project but yeah whew, man it's going to be absolutely awesome let me know what you guys think in the comments man super pumped for this project so this is what a bunch of you guys out there have been talking about in the comments <laughs> there are skeleton horses for sale on the hermitcraft server guys and you know me, as a lover of things that sparkle, I must have one. It looks like one has already been sold, there's only two left, and there's absolutely no ways that we are not leaving the shopping district today without one of these beautiful horses. That one's called Skeletor. <laughs> That's amazing. That one's called They Call Me T-Bone. Skeletor, my dude, I'm looking at you. You're a gorgeous specimen of an undead equestrian beast. I must have you how much do you cost my dude is there any signage over here how much do these things cost man is there a sign oh here we go um it's with the upside down fish skeleton horse equals 32 diamonds <laughs> look how excited skeletal was man he knows we're gonna be a match made in heaven in heaven friends forever <laughs> 32 diamonds though that's basically all of our profits that we made in big logs this week you know what guys it's gonna have to be done right there's absolutely no ways we're leaving this area without skeletal seriously <laughs> skeletal my dude get your beautiful skeleton butt out of there man it's you and me till the end of the world <laughs> uh hello can we can we actually uh, excuse me skeletal okay are you taking damage right now this shop is not very horse friendly <laughs> Let's make a little bit of space here to get Skeletor out of here. There we go. Uh, we kind of broke it though, didn't we? That's fine. We can, we can quickly fix it. Oh, it was actually a double gate. Wow, I'm an idiot. Um, here we go. Nice. We have a brand new steed, guys. We now have a donkey in a boat and a horse without meat on it. Um, what has my life become? <laughs> Skeletor, my dude, you just chill down there and don't let any hermits touch you, okay? Just bite them with your very scary face if they try and touch you my little dude uh very happy to have you in the cyber dog family even though you don't have a brain and you stink profusely all right time to get down to a little bit of work here in the hermitcraft stock exchange for the last part of today's episode guys 
<laughs> oh man, see those eyeballs just cracks me up. Uh, I want to do a bit of work on the vault section of this, uh, and that's going to give Doc an opportunity to start working on a little bit of the redstone. Uh, I've done a little bit of an outline here for our future plans for the interior. Basically, Doc and I want to add a balcony up here to the top of the stock exchange. Up there, we will have some offices and uh, a couple of other cool things. And we're going to get up there via a bubble vator over here um, and get down via a bubble vator over here. And of course, there is going to be a beautiful redstone vault door in this position that hermits will open to get down to the vaults. And at the back of the vault door will be a two wide bubble vator that will take hermits down into the vaults of the Hermitcraft stock exchange. Now down here, we are going to need to create a private vault for all 10 of the companies that are listed on the stock exchange and each of these vaults is going to have to uh, do a number of things number one it's going to have to be a place where hermits can buy the stock so they'll come down here with their diamonds to purchase stock and they'll also need to save that stock or, or at least to uh, store that stock down here safe from the prying fingers of any of the other hermits on the stock exchange so we need to make sure that this vault down here is very secure and doc is going to use some really clear have a redstone to add basically like a lock and key feature into each of the vaults and only uh, the hermits that have the key will be able to access their particular vaults. Going to be pretty sweet. Now we're going to have to make this entire vault out of uh, some very expensive materials also. Of course we're just going to be using quartz for this build. We're going to be using diamond blocks. We're going to be using sea lanterns so that when the hermits come down here they're going to feel like they are in a very exclusive and expensive part of the Hermitcraft server. So first things first, guys, we need to figure out exactly how each of the vaults is going to look. And the way that Doc and I have sort of figured this out off camera is a little something like this. Let's get a little bit of light over here, though. Let's say this is one of the vaults, right? At the very back of the vault, um, you know what? Let's just pick up this shulker box as an example. At the very back of the vault is going to be a shulker box uh, that the hermits are going to use to purchase their stock. So when they have purchased the stock from the stock exchange upstairs, they will come down into the vault and this is where they will deposit the diamonds uh, that they use to purchase that stock, right? That will leave the hermits with a whole bunch of stock inside of their inventory uh, and a whole bunch of diamonds inside of their payment chest. And of course, we want to give the hermits a spot where they will be able to, to uh, store their stock so they don't have to carry them around or, or uh, lose them somewhere in the world, right? So over here in this position, we might add a couple of chests uh, th that the hermits can store their stock in. Um, we don't have any wood down here, but let's just use dirt as an example for chestage. <laughs> So this will be where the hermits will store their stock over here inside of their vault. And all of this, of course, will be secured by a, a, a door in this position that only that hermit or that, uh, you know, the, the member of that company, I suppose, will be able to access. So we'll, we will have a locking mechanism over here. Uh, so say this is the vault for Concorp. Only members of Concorp will be able to get in here using a key, basically, to get in here. And this, of course, will be a place for them, as I mentioned, to, to pay for their stock purchases and then to store their stock over here. Uh, so it kind of acts like a bank uh, for all of their diamonds and for all of their stock. So instead of keeping their diamonds in their bases, I suppose they will be keeping it down here in the vault room. Pretty, pretty awesome. Now we're going to need 10 of these different things or 10 of these vaults for all of the 10 companies listed. And of course, we need to give Doc enough room to install all of the different bits of redstone that are going to be required uh, for this particular build. I, guys, don't know anything about the redstone. I don't know how it works. Doc figured it out. So make sure you are following Doc's channel uh, for this project. And, and his videos, of course, will be released building the redstone into the vaults and stuff. It's going to be absolutely amazing, man. Anyway, let me get some of these vaults built down. Down here guys and then we'll come back together for a last time to have a look at them and man i'm getting psyched for this project it's gonna be so freaking sweet is that looking sufficiently vaulty cyber diggity dogs <laughs> i've had a lot of fun setting these up but i think we probably have to stop doing this now uh, it's very important that we leave Doc a bit of a blueprint down here of what the vault should look like. But Doc needs to come in here and figure out how much space he needs for the redstone. We might have to take all of this down to give each of the vaults a little bit more space for redstone. So I've made the whole thing out of white concrete. It's going to be nice and easy to take down if I haven't done it properly. And uh, next step is going to be for Doc to come here um, and have a go at installing the redstone for the doors of each of the vaults. So make sure you follow in Doc on his channel, man. It's going to be a sweet part of this project. Anyway, each of 
of the corporations gets their own vault. Inside of their vault, they will have a deposit box where they will pay for their stocks and they will then have uh, stock storage in the form of four double freaking chests where they can store all of their stock and they will also, of course, have a key door to get in and out. And all of this is going to be made out of quartz. Of course, we're going to make this vault look absolutely beautiful. But for now, guys, we're going to leave the project here uh, so that Doc can come and do his magic down in this very horrible and damp cave underneath uh, the Overcraft Stock Exchange. And of course, we've got a lot of work to do still on this build to get it looking absolutely glorious so that we can open up the doors for trading. And uh, at some point, of course, we're going to have to get rid of this bikini because... It's absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, my dudes, as the stars rise above this ridiculous bikini bamboni, it is time for me to say goodbye from the Hermacraft Stock Exchange. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the episode and are excited about the Stock Exchange and Hermit Railway Network projects that we are working on, hit that like button like nobody's business. And if you haven't subscribed yet, guys, please consider subscribing and jingle jangling the jingle jangle bell uh, so that you can get notified when new videos come out. All right, guys, Randy Get a dog signing out from the Hermitcraft server. My dudes, we will smell you all in the next episode.